in 10 years time, um, hey, hey, Alexa, I want to speak to my advisor. Uh, can you uh, diarize an appointment for them to call me up? And it will be holographic calls. That's where it's going. Wow. This is crazy. <laughs> like, it kind of blows my mind. Hi, Darren. Would you like to introduce yourself to us? Yeah, hi. I'm Darren Henry, Global Head of Intelligence and Optimization, uh, Evident. And we essentially sort of uh, create uh, and engineer experiences for our clients and their customers. I've got a specific area within uh, the company to drive conversational AI. And that's a big thing at the minute. Uh, and it's a big focus for us in the future as well. Um, I sit within the digital experience division. My remit is actually to do two primary things. First one's to understand uh, customers' business problems. Uh, it could be operational efficiency, it could be customer experience, it could be employee experience. And the aim is to actually understand actually how we can make it better. Um, once we do that through uh, analytics, we then do something about it. And the optimization services that I provide actually sort of uh, aim to do that. So uh, we provide A-B testing, uh, digital delivery, tag management, and one that's uh, becoming sort of really, really important uh, nowadays is conversational AI. So how do you feel the current perception of AI compares to the reality of how it will be used? So for us, we're very much fully behind generative AI, large language models, uh, and various layers of AI to deliver the services that we provide to our clients. But the one thing that we feel quite proud at is actually sort of uh, understanding how does it feature in the current client model uh, and also what it, how does it feature in the future models as well. So we're not saying um, that it's a magic bullet, it's going to solve all our clients problems. What we do is we strategize how it can be used most effectively now uh, and in the future uh, for uh, our clients and as I said, uh, our own business. And in your opinion then, what role is AI playing in businesses today? Uh, it's all over every aspect of business. Uh, it could be uh, looking at the operational um, infrastructure uh, around how we develop and code up products and services on the cloud. Equally, it could be actually within the, uh, the customer servicing area as well and how AI optimizes what product portfolios uh, get suggested to the uh, customers and the clients or how they get serviced uh, as well. So a lot of people focus on sort of uh, chatbots and voice bots currently with AI. Uh, what we are focusing on is what we call second generation AI in that area, where that Im dramatically improves the experience that people have with those said systems. Mobile phone companies with 5G and IoT, they're actually doing and they're actually proven holographic calling now. Hey Alexa, I want to speak to my advisor. Uh, can you uh, diarize an appointment for them to call me up? And it'll be holographic calls. That's where it's going. Wow. This is crazy. Would it be a real person or? Yeah. So do you know you're doing sort of um, FaceTime now? Yeah. Imagine FaceTime where actually sort of the mobile phone is just the device that transmits the signal and it projects up actually the hologram. I could be speaking to one of my colleagues in, in, in the US and I can actually see them in 3D. It's crazy. <laughs> it's honestly mad. For me, we've got a fundamental shift in terms of how AI is going to change how businesses think and actually sort of react to to changes in the marketplace. So then I suppose, what skills gaps are there within your industry in particular? There are skill gaps around actually sort of the knowledge and understanding of what the AI um, sort of functions can deliver. Everyone's heard about ChatGPT and sort of focused on actually looking at how they can sort of blend pictures together. Um, but AI can do so many more things. And uh, the aspect of you know, bringing sort of a new sort of talent on board, you know, the aspect that we focus on is very much around making people aware of actually what it can do, but also setting realistic expectations on what it can do now. Um, so the gaps that we see are actually around how it can be applied uh, to business now and also how it can be applied to business in the future. So how is your business trying to solve this? And um, there's two facets to it. Um, the first one's educating sort of our own uh, internal colleagues on what uh, AI is, how can it be applied to business, what the considerations are, uh, and actually sort of how it can sort of address future innovations. So we're on a, an education plan uh, with regards to just making all our staff aware of actually what, what AI is. Uh, but equally, what we're looking for is actually sort of you know, bringing sort of new talent in, new sort of uh, colleagues 
that have a curiosity to push the boundaries on what AI is and actually how it can be applied in the future. From my perspective, apprenticeship programs are the lifeblood of actually how I'm going to evolve and future-proof my uh, division. And um, specifically what I mean by that is, you know, when we're recruiting an apprentice, apprentices, is they're really sort of changing the dynamic of uh, my team in the sense of they're bringing in new enthusiasm, new curiosity, new ways of working that stretch my managers to essentially sort of help them evolve, but equally my managers to think differently uh, as well. So essentially apprentices actually sort of represent a strong strategic uh, approach to how I'm going to ensure that Everton maintains its position as a world leader and actually pushes the boundary of actually how we're delivering the services in my area. Yeah, that's such a fair insight. What excites you the most about the future of technology? AI is really sort of coming into play and it's almost like we are it's the same thing what happened when computers first came in. It's the same thing when cloud came in. It's a, allow organizations to think differently about the services and products that they offer to their customers and to their clients. As part of my area of conversational AI, that represents the biggest opportunity for me because I can help shape and shift how organizations interact with their customers to make it better for their customers and their employees uh, in that company. Thank you, Darren. There's some really good insights you shared with us today. Thank you.